Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the anatomy of the typical human rib, and then we're also going to talk about how that actually differs from the atypical human ribs. All right? So most ribs are considered typical because they share um, some common anatomical features, and those are what we're going to talk about here. We'll identify them on this rib, and when we actually look at the joints in the next video, we'll actually get a little bit more information on these. Okay? Now, ribs that are typical are either considered ribs 3 through 10 or 3 through 9. Rib 10 can be variable, and this is going to be genetic variation as to whether or not it's typical or atypical. Okay, so to start out with, we have the head of the rib. The head over here is going to be the more posterior attachment on the vertebra. Okay, so this is the general site of the costovertebral attachment. And when we say costovertebral, the vertebral implies that one part of the attachment is the vertebrae, and costo means rib. So this part over here is the head. Now the head's a very general region here. It usually will have two smaller facets on it a superior articular facet and an inferior articular facet. To be considered a typical rib, it has to have both of these facets. Um, atypical ribs, some of them will actually have one large facet where basically the superior and inferior portions are combined into one facet. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. So what does that mean? Turns out it's easier to understand the atypical ribs first, and then after that it will be better to understand the typical ones. So here's our T1 thoracic vertebra, right? Um, now you can see here on either side, there's a space for the rib to attach. This will actually be the costovertebral joint. Now, um, one of the things about atypical ribs is they are going to attach completely to one thoracic vertebrae, okay? Notice this site of attachment for, this would actually be rib one, is completely contained within T1. Okay, so this space where rib one is going to attach is completely contained within T1. Okay, that's actually characteristic of an atypical rib. And this space where the rib attaches is what we would actually call a facet or a true facet. It's a true facet, even though it's for atypical ribs, it's a true facet because it's contained completely within one vertebrae. So rib one would articulate with T1 completely in this facet that's within T1, okay? Now, when we go to the typical ribs, notice this space right here where rib seven will articulate is not completely within T6, and it's not completely within T7. It's actually shared between T6 and T7. And so rather than this being considered a facet, it actually has two halves. It has an upper half and a lower half, and each half is called a demi-facet. Demi typically means half. Like in Greek mythology, there were demigods. They're like half-gods, okay? So a demi-facet is half of a full facet. And so this is the case that you have when the attachment of the rib is shared between two vertebrae. So the upper one is actually termed the inferior demi-facet, and the reason it's inferior let me make sure I spell that correctly. The reason it's inferior is because it's inferior um, in terms of T6. Um, to be fair, there would also be um, one up here that would be uh, shared with T5, right? But in terms of T6, this would be its inferior demi-facet. Likewise, this one down here is the superior demi-facet, but it's superior really only because T7 would also have another demi-facet down there that would be shared with T8. Okay, so how we name the demi-facets typically is going to be um, according to the vertebrae. So this would be T6's superior demi-facet. This one is its inferior demi-facet. Okay, and the inferior demi-facet of the vertebra above combined with the superior demi-facet of the vertebra below makes up the entire attachment for that rib. Okay, so when we talk about the typical ribs having a superior articular facet, and an inferior articular facet, what we really mean is that the superior articular facet of the rib articulates with the inferior demi-facet of the vertebra above, and then the inferior articular facet of the rib articulates with the superior demi-facet of the vertebra below. Okay, so basically 
One facet goes in one demi facet, the other articular facet goes in the other demi facet. Okay, and this is what we see in a typical rib. Make sure you understand why this one is a true facet and these are demi facets. Demi facets are shared between two vertebrae. The full facet or true facet is contained in one vertebra. Now, if we go a little bit further past the, the head of the, of the vertebra, we get to the neck region, not too important, and then we get to what's called the tubercle. Now, the tubercle has two parts. It has an articular part and a non-articular part. The articular part, um, or articular facet of the tubercle, this is actually going to articulate with the transverse costal facet of the associated transverse process. So these vertebrae, right, they have transverse processes, and on those transverse processes, there is a transverse costal facet. So this transverse costal facet is on the associated vertebra. This articular facet of the ribs tubercle articulates with that transverse costal facet. Okay. Now there's also a non-articular part of the tubercle. Um, this is really just the attachment site for the posterior costotransverse ligament. This is a ligament that connects the transverse process of the vertebra uh, to the rib. So it attaches here. And so it acts to stabilize um, that costotransverse joint, which again was that articulation between the articular facet of the tubercle and the transverse costal facet of the transverse process of the vertebra. Okay, And then we have the angle of the rib. That's right here. Um, the angle of the rib is really more of an anatomical landmark. And what it does is it marks the division between structures innervated by ventral rami and dorsal rami. So generally speaking, for muscles, if you look at the, at the back and you see a muscle that's innervated lateral to the angle of the rib, so outside of it, it's usually going to be innervated by ventral rami from the spinal cord. And then if that muscle is medially angled, so within it, it's going to be innervated by dorsal rami. And then down here on the inferior surface of the rib, we have this very large costal groove. It really continues all the way up here. Okay? That costal groove on the inferior surface of the rib is a site for uh, the intercostal veins, arteries, and nerves to kind of traverse along the rib as they make their way uh, to various muscles like the intercostal muscles or intercostalis muscles. So it's also a site for the attachments of the intercostals. Okay, or intercostalis. So that could be external, internal, and innermost intercostal. Okay, So these are features of the typical ribs. When we're looking at atypical ribs, um, they're going to either lack one or more components of these, or they're going to have additional features that really differentiate them um, from the typical ribs. And when we talk about the atypical ribs, most of these are going to articulate with a vertebrae through a true or full facet where it's totally located on one vertebrae. So examples of those we're going to see are ribs 1, 11, and 12. So let's take a look at these ribs. So the atypical human ribs are going to be always ribs 1, 2, 11, and 12. And depending on that genetic variation, uh, we can also include rib 10 in there. We'll get to that. So what makes rib 1 atypical? Well, rib 1 is atypical. Uh, for that reason we just gave. It articulates with a true facet which is completely on the T1 vertebra. And so it's only going to have one facet on its head. So when we go back to the typical vertebra, those articulate with those demi facets. And so the head of the rib is going to have a superior articular facet and an inferior articular facet. The atypical ribs, the ones that articulate with a full or true facet, they're not going to have these separate articular facets. It's going to be one larger facet on that rib's head. Let's start with rib one. What makes rib one atypical? Well, rib one is atypical, uh, first of all, because it only has one facet on its head. So only one facet. It doesn't need that superior articular facet and inferior articular facet because it does not articulate with demi facets. Remember, it articulates with the full facet or true facet located entirely on the T1 vertebra. Okay? so it only has a single facet. The other thing that rib one has, it has grooves for the subclavian artery and the vein. Uh, these are structures that have to cross underneath the clavicle over the first rib through these grooves, and then they become the axillary artery and axillary vein. And between these two grooves, we have this bulge in the bone called the scalene tubercle. This is important because it's the insertion of the anterior and middle scalenes. 
and then the posterior scaling will insert on the second rib, which brings us to rib two. What makes rib two atypical? So this thing right here, the single facet, that's actually incorrect. I believe it was supposed to be pointing at the head of rib one. It turns out that rib two actually has uh, the typical setup for its head. It has two articular facets, and superior and inferior. So it's going to it's going to attach to uh, demi facets between T1 and T2. Okay, so it attaches in the same way to the vertebra as a typical rib. What makes rib two different is it actually has two fairly large tubercles. One of them is over here. The one closest to the head is called the costal tubercle, and then the one over here, this one, is actually the attachment for serratus anterior. Remember, serratus anterior is a scapular protractor, and one of its attachments is going to be a rib 2 right here. And then we have ribs 11 and 12, which are the other two ribs that are always atypical. One reason that they're atypical is they only contain one facet on their head. So rib 11's head articulates completely with a facet on T11, and rib 12 articulates with a facet that's completely on T12. So ribs 11 and 12 do not operate via those demi facets. They are complete or true facets. The thing that makes 11 and 12 also different, other than the fact that they do not articulate the sternum by any means anteriorly, is they have no tubercles. Okay, ribs one through 10 all have tubercles. And remember the purpose of that tubercle. That tubercle is going to allow it to articulate with the vertebra via its transverse process. So what that means is, is ribs 11 and 12 do not articulate with the transverse processes of T11 and T12 respectively. Okay? They only articulate via that one facet and some ligaments. So none with the transverse process because they have no tubercles. Ribs 1 through 10 all have tubercles. Now, uh, rib 10 is sometimes considered an atypical rib, sometimes it's not. It just depends on the specific person and their genetics. And the reason why is that in some individuals, um, rib 10 articulates with a facet that's completely on T10. So let's actually see what that would look like. All right, I'm going to bring that over here on this page. We're going to raise this up and put these down here. Okay. So basically what we would have is we could have one situation where the rib, number 10, articulates with a facet that's completely on T10. Okay? Now, the facet's going to be a little bit lower, but it would be still completely on T10. Okay? So if we have a situation like this, then T10 would be considered an atypical rib. However, sometimes we have a situation where here's T10, and here's T11. And now we have the demi facets that look more like this, where instead of being completely on T10, it's shared between T10 and T11. And in that case, rib 10 would be a typical rib. But remember, if this is T11, that facet would be completely on T11, because 11 is always an atypical rib. So with T10, it really just depends on whether or not the facet is completely on T10, or if it's shared between T10 and T11. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the typical ribs and their anatomy versus the atypical ribs. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.